Hey folks, and welcome back to our coverage of the 2022 Jonesboro Open here at Gatekeeper Media, as we're about to bring you some chase card action here for our second round. Big shout out to all of you for tuning in, as well as a special thank you to our Patreon supporters who helped make all of this coverage possible. I am Dustin Murray, esports commentator turned disc golf commentator, coming back at you to bring you this coverage and very excited to get into this one as we have a great group of players here. Corey Ellison, Calvin Heinberg headlining the car, but Matt Bell and AJ Carey also coming in all tied at eight under par. We had a lot of players close, as you can see, all these players tied for fourth place right now coming into the second round. Alden Harris, of course, having a hot round on our opening day at 11 under. The only one to break double digits. And uh, let's take a look at some of our players' bags. Of course, Corey Ellis playing for Discraft. Definitely likes those buzzes. Very strong putter with the Challenger. Lots of Raptors. And, of course, the Force is kind of his distance driver of choice. Take a look over at Calvin Heinberg, of course, that Innova player. The Toro, kind of a new approach disc out of Innova that he'll be throwing, but uh, definitely known for his Eagles. Uh, very strong with those, as well as his Destroyers. And the Draco, of course, is also kind of a unique disc for him that you don't see too many people bagging. Matt Bell now coming in with Thought Space Athletics, and I believe also with ED7 putting the Penrose, but as you can see, has the Praxis, the Pathfinder, and several other Thought Space discs, but also does throw a few discs from DGA and Innova mixed in that bag, as I know that Thought Space kind of allows for that open bag concept. And then AJ Carey now playing with Innova, and you can see also has a couple of Innova, or excuse me, Infinite discs kind of sprinkled in there. And kind of typical stuff though as we do get into our opening hole it is going to be a 470 foot tee shot rolling hills and today was very windy day one already had some swirling winds but today it was even more impactful on our players And Corey Ellis will be leading things off, ranked 16th in the UDIS World Rankings right now, fresh off of a fourth place finish at our first major of the year at Champions Cup. Also at a top 15 at Texas State's very powerful backhand thrower. Particularly his standstill throws are some of the most powerful I've seen. I'm sure a lot of you out there would agree if you've watched Corey Ellis. Just has that nice little quick hop sidestep, even for his distance drives off the tee. And Again, these wins making it really hard to fight up that last slope. Calvin, and Calvin comes in ranked fifth in the Utah squad rankings, was third at Champions Cup, as well as a second at Texas States and a third at LVC. I feel like you rarely see him placing outside of the top five. Just such a consistent player. Perhaps the most consistent on tour. Ripping his Halo Destroyer into this wind and gets a lot of ground. Such a powerful thrower. Third to T, Matt Bell. Yeah, Matt Bell in the top 30 in the Disc World Rankings. Came 16th at Waco. Also had some very strong finishes last year at MVP Open and GMC had a fourth at MVP Open. Also finished in the top 15 last year at our Pro Tour finale. So definitely a guy who can be quite strong. Definitely known for his putting. Just trying to figure out this wind here to get off the tee. And gets it out there and gets it into play. Let's say not really able to get near the circle, but at least we'll be able to pitch up for par. Rounding out the 3.33 p.m. tee time, A.J. Carey. A.J. Carey certainly a guy that you don't see on the Elite Series too, too much, but definitely a strong player in his region. Had several top 25 finishes in the Pro Tour last year. Has placed seventh at Jonesboro in the past in 2020, so does have some history on this course. Had a couple of NCs cashed in already this year on the tour. Big deep runs just yet, but we'll see what he can do today. And really fights that wind well, to be honest with you. It gets up there a pretty good ways. Just that 
ripping headwind right to left as well, adding to the difficulty. Oh, Matt Bell skipping off the top there. Not sure if he was actually laying up or trying to give that somewhat of a bid. Feels like it was a layout that just kind of gave him a little something. And Coriolis also kind of teasing the basket there with that uh, chip shot up. AJ up next. And it's kind of a jump putt pitch up there. Just trying to get his par. And Calvin might be our only real look at birdie here from the card. And even he's still way out there. And yeah, just will lay up. Can't blame them in these wins. Gonna have to pick and choose your battles. As with it being this windy, this actually did play as our fourth most difficult hole. Played .24 strokes over par, only 5% of the field, finding the birdie. Card cleaning up their pars and getting ready to head into hole number two. Opening up with a par four here, 820 feet. Just looking for that placement shot on the right hand side there. And then you have an uphill climb on the approach to try to set up for your birdie. Definitely can be difficult to get up that hill on that second shot. Need to cover some good ground off the tee to set that up. We have a bit of a gap to hit here on this right-hand side. Looks low and inside from Corey Ellis. And yeah, that is going to get caught up, providing him with a tough challenge ahead. So that's a lot of ground to cover. Calvin will find the gap. And that this is trying to fight out. It's going to put him under this tree on the right side of the fairway, but still should have a chance to get up the hill. Ah, a little bit of a nasty kick there, or at least it's seen that way from Matt Bell. It actually kind of centers him in the fairway, so not too shabby. Might be able to get something done from there. Need to carry up next. Puts that one out really wide, and that is just not getting the fade back. And that is going to be a really messy affair to try to get out of that situation. So you have Corey Ellis up first here. She plays a big hyzer, mostly for placement, kind of conceding any real chance at trying to get up there for birdie, but just setting up nicely to get the par. So see what Matt Bell can do here. Lost a lot of distance with that tree kick, but still center fairway. Yeah, that wind just taking that thing way into that left-hand side. A tricky approach to get his par might be obstructed. And yeah, I mean, AJ Carey is filming a wildlife documentary. Let's find a way to bust out, though. And you do hear a mention of potential backdoor route to get to the pin for par, so we'll see how that fares. Calvin has a chance to attack the pin, it seems like, for birdie. Looks like he gets caught up, though. Trying to play that hyzer around the right-hand side and just got caught up a little bit, it seems. So now we're back to Corey Ellis. And, yeah, even he catches some shrubbery on the way up, and so our card is definitely having some struggles here on the second hole. So it certainly was a tough hole on the day. Played top five in difficulty. Played slightly over par, so. Down. Six, 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 six. Oh, what a nice little chip up there. Almost put that one in the basket. Not sure if you realize it's just how close that was. Patent pending here, it looks like, for Calvin. Calvin. 
And that is well done. Definitely should be able to salvage part from that position. And yeah, what does Matt Bell have here? Looks like maybe a wide forehand. Try to skip it in. And I'll do just fine. Quick pitch up there from Corey Ellis. Put him right next to the basket. And now here's Calvin for, I believe, a par putt. And that'll do it. Dead center. So opening even through the first two holes. See if Matt Bell can follow suit here. And that'll do another par for our card. As we are early on here, what is your win fighter disc? If you're in a big headwind, what is the disc that you trust to get the job done? Let me know in the comments below as I try to interact with you folks where I can. We wait for AJ Carey to step up here to try to sink this putt. Yep, and that'll go in for par for AJ. And just a drop in here from Corey Ellis to collect his bogey. Jump into the 435 foot par three here. Pretty standard shot as far as shaping goes, but again, these windy conditions certainly making it tricky to get that distance just right. Give yourself a good birdie putt. That's hung out there nicely from Calvin Heinberg if he gets the right ground action. Yeah, a little bit wide right, but I think that's still inside circle one. Might have a bit of a headwind putt, though. It's kind of swirly, so always kind of hard to judge exactly what he'll face. So Matt Bell now takes the tee. Looks solid here for Matt Bell. That will jump up. Looks like it's just outside circle one. Hard to tell. here from AJ Carey. We'll skip forward though. Should be at least set up for par from there. This looks solid as long as we can get the right fade and skip from Corey Ellis. And yeah, that'll be just outside circle one. So yeah, here's AJ Carey looking just to pitch up for par, you'd have to imagine. Actually kind of floats it up there and gets the head with a chance to raise it and see if he can maybe give it a soft bid. We'll settle for par, though. Ah, nice run there from Matt Bell. Definitely a range he likes to putt from. Definitely known for that jump putt. That one will not stick, though. Now for Corey, just outside circle one. Chains out. Gives it a chance. Let's settle, though. So you'll be able to get par. And here's Calvin. A chance at birdie. We have yet to get a birdie so far this round from our card. But Calvin will deliver. After a great shot off the tee. The rest of our card will step up and look to at least walk out of here. And even par. be some drop-ins for our remaining two players to get that done. And 
catch you at the end of this break. Let's get back to it here. We're at a 660 foot par four. This is a new tee pad that was brought to Jonesboro this year at the Dis side of heaven to make this hole a little bit more difficult. You do want a left to right moving shot to really get you on the optimal side of the fairway. The more left you are, the more cut off you kind of are on that second shot. Does some good work there for Calvin. Not too shabby. Matt Bell also playing to that right-hand side. And you can kind of see that tree line off to the left is what can really cut you off from the pin if you're too far left off the tee. So far, Carr doing well to avoid that obstacle. See if AJ Carey can follow suit. And that is fading off to the left, so might have a trickier second shot from over there. So let's take a look at the form of AJ Carey. Definitely has that faster pace and that big X step, but is able to really grasp control of it to get some good power out of his throw. So now we'll see what Coriolis has in store. He actually does try to play that hyzer line out to the right-hand side. It's kind of what this new tee pad location set up to try to avoid giving players an option for that big hyzer course. Now it's a much tighter hyzer line. Get some work done. Now we'll see Matt Bell up first here on the second shot. Trying to play that turnover. Hoping now that it will fight out. Not quite getting back as much as he had hoped. We'll have to just settle for pitching up for par. And that's the tricky thing about being over there is that you want to turn something enough to get around that tree line, but you need it to fight back. And in these winds, it's really tough to get that going. Calvin with a much better angle. It would actually play something lower speed and make it really far up there. That is absolutely parked. Really well done. And yeah, here's that cutoff angle that Corey Ellis is left with. Man, that's just going to stay in the air for a lot longer than he hoped. And highs are out and does stay in bounds, though. There is an OB line over there, but he will be on the right side of that. That's what AJ carries left with. I believe he was also kind of towards this left-hand side. Indeed he is. Oh, well done, though. Near the bullseye will be AJ Carey for birdie. Here we see what Matt Bell's left with. Headwind, it looks like. An elevated pin. Tries his well-known hot putt, but not really able to give the threat to the basket. And a brilliant putt there from Coriolis to save the par. Wasn't really in an ideal spot off the tee. Had a little bit of a tougher approach, but in the end got the job done. Let's 
see if AJ Carey can connect here after a great approach. He will stick it. Nicely done there from AJ Carey. Well played hole. And my apologies. Apparently Corey Ellis did go OB on this hole. That's why he took the par. Didn't catch that at first, but did want to clarify. Well played hole there from Calvin to take his birdie. And here we move on to hole five, a 495 foot par three. And it's really just about the risk reward play here on this kind of double island setup. Do you want to go for the birdie by playing the big shot? Or do you want to just lay up short and settle for par? Of course, Calvin certainly has the distance to get there. Most of our pros do, but it's just a challenge of playing over that water, dealing with these winds, and the risk that brings into play. Looks like Calvin's going for it. Getting dropped by the wind, though. Still makes it across with the nice skip forward. And so that'll do. Looks like there was a bit of a tailwind for our players on this hole, so a little bit more favorable for playing over the gap. Let's see what AJ Carey wants to do here. He's going up the gut, too. He's looking for it. A little of a tail right to left here he's trying to use. And he gets caught up on one of the last trees, and... Oh... That is going to be OB, from what the red flag has told us. And that bell going for the big hyzer play, playing it safe, just settling for the par. And have your typical bailout play, as that'll be just fine. Corey Ellis, again, certainly a player who has the power to get there, no doubt. But he is just looking for the safer hyzer for the par. And we'll spike that in. Oh, Ellis hitting the bottom of the barrel. Easy tap in par. AJ Carey from the drop zone looking to salvage a bogey out of the situation. We'll land inside the circle. That Bell who also laid up now next. Just pitches it up for par. No problem. Great crowd out there actually in for this event. Always good to see those crowds building up for our Pro Tour. So we see Calvin going for birdie after a great drive. Ah, just a little high. Probably expecting that tail in to drop his putt, but may have just been close enough to basket where the tail didn't really have enough time to impact the disc. Ah, low out the hand from AJ Carey. Looks like a double is brewing. Right after that birdie on hole four, too. It's just drop bins for the rest of our players here to salvage what's left. Mostly pars coming in. But yeah, AJ Carey is going to have to be lick his wounds a little bit after this one. As this played, it's our third most difficult hole. 0.4 strokes over par. Not too many birdies out there. Just 6% of the field finding it. As we head into the good old island hole here out at Jonesboro, 315 foot par three. A lot of right-handed players usually look for the forehand as the left side's a little bit more open, but certainly there is space for the backhand if that is your preferred shot, which it is for Calvin. And that is tracking. Oh my. 
And let's take a look at this form from Calvin Heimberg. I feel people just sometimes underplay how far this man can throw. Just so good at that little skip step. Just gets that plant foot so close. Just allows him to really drive that disc forward. Definitely one of those guys who can break that 600 mark with a distance driver. So we'll see what Matt Bell has in store with his backhand. Uh-oh, that's overturned. And that is in the pond. Morielis, two going backhand. Oh, that's carrying a lot left. Hits the wall, I think, and yeah, that will stick. Scary for a moment there. Made you wonder, but does find the inbounds. Now AJ carries left. Trying to fight back after that tough break on hole five. That looks dangerous. And just never gets to fade. And so a couple of our players will be finding the drop zone here to try to salvage the bogey. Bell will get up there. A little bit of a tester putt, though. AJ going to the forehand against the crosswind, and we'll settle up there nicely. Should be able to get his four. And here's Coriolis for a very long birdie bid. But it connects. Coriolis, what a putt. Fights back to even thus far on the round. Keeping himself in the race. Of course, Calvin, good off the tee. Great chance for birdie. Facing a bit of a headwind here. So taking some extra time. But it will land in the bucket. Three for four on these last few played. And yeah, like I said, Matt Bell is a bit of a tester here to get his four. Little, little on the edge, but he's going to find it nonetheless. It's all that matters for the scorecard. And AJ will get his as well. And now we're off to hole seven, a 675 foot par four, which also features a new tee pad compared to the previous year, making this hole a little bit more challenging. As you can see, it's a very well guarded green. The best way to approach it is from that left hand side. And there, we've seen players go right and left off the tee around this initial bush, and it's going to be Calvin going to the left hand side, the more traditional route. I do think being that far over left actually does make it a little bit easier to approach the green. The more right you are, the more cut off, and you have to do some more finesse to get yourself up there. Corey also going left-hand side. Looks great out the hand. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty ideal. Right near the catch cam. Matt Bell swinging the hyzer kind of over the top of everything. Does get over that left-hand side, though. And he will be more towards that right-hand side, which does make it a little bit trickier, I think, to approach this green. Kind of have to fight through this wall of trees to get in there from over on that side. That bill will be going to that forehand. Does seem like the ideal play to break through that left-hand side of the green. 
I'll just get s out early. So that's going to be a pitch up for par more than likely. Calvin Heimberg should be at a good angle to get the forehand in there. And yeah, just doesn't really get that forward penetration he needed. He too will fall short of that green. Here's what AJ Carey's left with. As you can see, a lot more cut off on this right-hand side for this play. But does flex it over right near one of our catch cam members. And, I mean, does get up there. Does have a bit of a look, it appears. Coriolis got way up there. and Has a good angle to approach. Ah, catches one of those trees on the edge, though. And yeah, Matt Bell. Gonna have to stretch out for this one. Oh! Looked good. He thought he had it. I did too, but a little high. Let's see what Calvin's left with here. Gonna have to punch through. Oh, wow, a lot. I mean, that was certainly difficult. Had a bit of a hole he could punch through and gave it a run, but it's going to fall just a little bit left. One of our better looks, honestly, from the card at birdie is going to be A.J. Carey here, but still challenging. Crosswind. And just low out the hand. Does fall, though. We'll be able to get his par. And here is Corey Ellis for birdie. And that will play. Really well done from Corey Ellis. Two in a row now. Starting to really get on the right trajectory. The rest of our car will just start tapping out here as we start to get towards the end of our front nine. Just a couple of holes left to play. We're going to get to hole eight, the 324 foot par three. Just that left to right moving shot required off the tee. Need to make sure you push forward enough to get around that tree line, but don't want to get too crazy. And yeah, the forehand usually preferred throw for our right handed players. It does go really inside, though, for Corey Ellis, and it could be absolute jail in that tree line. Same thing happens for Calvin. It seems like the height really just allowed that wind to get on the flight plate and really just push it before it could get forward enough. But he might still have something. He kind of bounced out. This looks a lot better from Matt Bell. This is looking destined for a good position. And actually deep. Just outside circle one, it appears. And with the elevated basket and kind of a slope green, this is kind of a dangerous basket to putt at. But we'll see. And that's inside as well from AJ Carey. Everyone just struggling with that inside error. Let's see what these players are left with. It's definitely a tricky situation over there. AJ up first, the bat. Punches through with a nice low skipper, but oh, gets on edge. Does settle down, though, pretty quickly. So that is fortunate. And yeah. Not left with much here. I believe this is Coriella. It's hard to tell. <laughs> oh, no. Rejected. Not quite uh, doing well on the limbo line. So we're going to see Matt Bell here from deep trying to get in. Close. Catches edge, and it's going to get a nasty roll. Stays inside the circle, but still a long comebacker. Calvin, again, had that bounce out. And yeah, outside the circle, a chance. And puts it in. Just on the circle's edge, actually. But nonetheless, an impressive putt. Nice birdie to pick up. Heinberg's been on a roll here. He's four down through eight. After a bit of a slow start in the first couple of holes that all of our players faced. Matt 
does land the tester to at least salvage par. AJ Carey hoping to do the same here. Again, these swirling rid winds making it hard to assess things. Looks like he's got a little bit of a headwind. Maybe a right to left mixed into it. Right where it needs to be, though. We'll knock down the par. Just a drop in bogey for Corey Ellis. So we get into our final hole for this front nine, the 750-foot par four. Just need to break up into a good position, and then you have a bit of a blind approach left to right shot that has to be connected to set up for the birdie. Also a challenging gap to hit immediately off the tee. Calvin Heimberg finds it no problem, getting that drift way out left. But honestly, that can really open up that approach shot. So he'll be happy with that. Matt Bell does slide that thing through. Thought it was maybe a bit wide out of his hand, but actually does find himself pretty much center cut. So not too shabby. Carry, hugging that right hand side and kind of finds himself in a similar situation to Matt Bell. Maybe covered a bit more ground though. Now we have Corey Ellis. Wow, plays a wide hyzer outright. It's wide open already. Yeah, it's literally wide open. Makes sense. I don't. The gap is, uh, okay. Well, the gap? Playing the big gap in the sky. And while he's way out here to the right, might have himself a route he can take that he feels good with. Flex forehand, it looks like. Gets caught up, however. Matt Bell trying to swing that hyzer around the right-hand side. Good placement, just not quite getting the distance he needed to get that birdie putt, but still not too shabby. And yeah, here is going to be AJ Carey, who did make it a bit more forward. Similar angle he's facing. Through the tree. Come on. Trying to fight through the trees with the hyzer, and actually looks like he did break into the edge of circle one. So it looks like he'll have a chance. And here's what Calvin's left with on this left-hand side of the fairway. I was curious to see how open it was over here. Has to play this forehand, but it has a window. And yeah, that's great. Maybe a little bit of a roll he was hoping not to get, but I think he still has a circle one look there. Oriel has taken the jump putt approach just to settle up for par. Long bit here from Matt Bell, but again, these little jump putts from here, something he likes. Oh, close. Had a few close calls this round, just hasn't quite dropped one in yet. So now we move over to AJ Carey, I think it's just outside circle one, or just on the edge. Has a bit of a tailwind putt. And puts it in the heart of the chains. Well done from AJ Carey. Really well played hole. And here's Calvin Heimberg. I think he's also probably just on that edge of circle one. Bit of a crosswind. Drops it in the bucket nonetheless. That's two birdies here on the card. So our other two will be looking to at least salvage the par on our final hole this front nine. 
Calvin Heinberg's done, definitely done some good scoring here on this front half. Five under already here on the front nine. Corey goes good for par. And Matt Bell will look to follow suit as he's right there to drop it in. And that will do it here for our front nine of this round of two chase card. Calvin at 13 under par. Really getting hot here, particularly on this back half of the front nine. Corey Ellis, Matt Bell, and AJ Carey still in a tight grouping behind. And as things stand, Alden Harris still continues to lead the charge, but Calvin Heinberg right on his heels with a tight group in behind. Appreciate all of you so much for tuning into this coverage. Be sure to follow and subscribe for more coming up. Definitely look out for the back nine for the second round, as well as our final round chase card coming up for you, as well as all real Elite Series events for the Pro Tour. Special shout out again to our Patreon supporters who help make this all possible. And again, thanks so much. Hope you enjoy the commentary. I'm Dustin Murray, esports commentator turned disc golf commentator. Also have my uh, own YouTube channel called Dustin Disc if you want to check that out or you can watch an amateur play disc golf if you're into that. I don't know. <laughs> Just try to have a good time here at the close and I'll see you on the back half up here soon.